The sharp rise in London rental prices can be attributed to several factors. Firstly, the increase of interest rates have had a significant impact on landlords. Especially when those mortgage rates rose, so did the cost for landlords, particularly those with buy-to-let mortgages. And landlords were forced to pass on these costs in the form of higher rents to tenants. Additionally, tax changes over the last few years and stricter regulations has made it less attractive to landlords keeping their properties on the market, making the supply issue even worse. In fact, London rent has risen to a record high of £2,600, that's 4% higher than last year. And although rental growth is starting to slow down from its 16% high of 2022, politicians are paying attention and they want to do something about the rent control in the city. For years now, the London Mayor Sadiq Khan has been keen to introduce rent controls in the capital with the aim of making renting more affordable for Londoners. Now that Labour's in power, the key question on everyone's mind is, is rent control going to finally become a reality in London? And while Angela Rayner, Labour's deputy leader, recently blocked the mayor's plan to impose any type of rent control, the possibility of such measures can't be completely ruled out, especially with Labour still bringing out policies from the woodworks. In this video, we're going to look at the true drivers of London rent increases. We'll also look at Sadiq Khan's rent control and break that down for you. But also stay to the end because we're going to share with you how these rent controls have worked out in other parts of the world. Stay tuned. The London rental market is facing a severe imbalance of supply and demand, primarily because of the shrinking amount of properties coming out into the rental market. Now this is due mainly because smaller landlords are exiting the market. As a result, the number of rental properties coming onto the market has significantly declined. Of course, competition between tenants is fierce. And with more properties being sold off and fewer landlords coming into the rental market, tenants are often forced to bid against each other, making the rental situation even worse. In fact, Starmer, part of the manifesto, was that they will bring an end to rental bidding wars. So institutional investors and build-to-rent developers are stepping in to fill in the gap left by private landlords. However, it's just not enough to meet the demand, at least for the short term. This ongoing reduction in supply continues to put upward pressure on rent, making affordable outreach to a lot of Londoners. On the demand side of London rental properties, London population growth has been fueled by natural increases, but also by immigration. And of course, this naturally increases rent. The city's population has grown by 2.2 million people in recent years, and a large portion of that is immigration. Now, of course, those new arrivals when they first arrive, they want to perhaps rent for the first few years before they go on to buy a property. And this has put a strain on already challenging rental market. So that surge in demand and shrinking supply has really created a perfect storm. With population continuing to grow, even though that the growth of rental increase is starting to slow down, those rents are going to continue to be high as that population continues to be steady. I love interpreting data and yet I'm always curious about your views. Leave me a comment below. So how would the London Mayor's Sadiq Khan's rent freeze even work? Well, landlords who are renting their properties will have a rent freeze, so not increase their rent for a defined period of time. Typically, this is going to be a year to two years. Now, for those tenancies that already exist, the rent will be frozen and if renewing their contracts will continue paying the same rent they were paying before the freeze was implemented. The rental freeze will be temporary. However, the mayor potentially will be given powers to extend this freeze depending on economic conditions. And the aim of this is to relieve renters, at least for the time being, until the Labour Party finds a long-term strategy to resolve the rental crisis and very likely going to enforce this by implementing further regulations, ensuring that landlords comply. There might be certain exceptions, such as allowing for increase in rent to cover specific costs related to property improvements or repairs. These would need to be tightly controlled to prevent abuse. While the freeze would apply to existing tenancies, rent for new tenancies could still be determined by market conditions unless further regulations are introduced to control starting rents. Sadix Khan's proposal for rent freeze is part of a broader strategy to make housing more affordable in London. However, his proposal has been blocked by his own party 
making the implementation uncertain for now. And the debate continues on whether such a policy will even be effective in addressing the rental crisis or if it will just have unintended consequences and a reduced amount of rental property investment in the capital. The fact that rent control continues to be a debate absolutely means you should subscribe to this channel so you could keep in the loop. Rent controls have been implemented in various countries with mixed outcomes but often have unintended consequences not only for landlords, tenants, but also the overall rental market. So let's dive in how rental controls have affected other parts of the world, especially when it comes to landlords and tenants. Sweden has one of the most strict rent controls in the world, with tenant associations negotiating rent with landlords. And in fact, they always, from my understanding, go below market rate. Now, what are the consequences of this? What we do know is that there is a severe shortage of rental properties and there are waiting times that can exceed even a decade. I know, that's crazy. Berlin introduced a rent cap in 2020, keeping rental levels at 2019 rates. However, this was overturned by the government in 2021. Now, what happened and the impact that happened during that period was that there was a significant reduction in rental properties as landlords withdrew their properties and converted them into other uses. Similar stories to this across the pond in the US will include cities like San Francisco and New York. So clearly demonstrating that any type of rent control will be, have to be looked at very carefully in how it's implemented because it will have unintended consequences. To find out the truth why landlords are leaving London, make sure you check out my next video above and also the link is on the description. The root cause of the London rental crisis lies in the broader challenges that we have with housing shortage. I mean the capital has consistently failed to meet its housing targets with the number of new homes being built far lower than what's needed to accommodate the growing population in the city. Despite efforts of boosting constructions in London, issues like planning delays, high costs of construction, but also the lack of land is hindering the progress. So what we currently have is that lack of properties increasing rental prices. So building 1.5 million homes over a course of five years labor, good luck.